let's talk about ninjas for a second. Ninjas were supposed to be messengers that, you know, take a, a message from one town to another town in the shadows and they don't get caught. They're like freaking kung fu spies. <laughs> and that's why they make movies about them. Hey GQ, I'm Louis Tan and today we're gonna be reviewing some fight scenes. This is The Breakdown. First up, Kill Bill, Volume 1. So yes, this is arguably one of the greatest fight scenes of all times. Kill Bill, the Crazy 88, Uma Thurman. So the, the fighters here in Kill Bill seem very well trained. Some of the Crazy 8 seem a little crazy and a little messy, I should say. The way that they hold the katana, they're kind of flustered, they're scared, and you know, but that's part of the character that they're playing. Uma Thurman, on the other hand, seems very focused, very calculated, and very precise. Her sword work is impeccable, and a lot of the techniques that she uses could be used in real life, definitely. I don't know if she could fight this many guys at once, but, you know, it's Kill Bill, baby. <laughs> I studied Katana for a long time with seven-time world champion Caitlin Deschel. And um, there's only a few really basic moves that you can do with the Katana, the cuts. Then you, they're straight cuts, straight across the line, straight down the shoulder, the opposite, and that's pretty much the basic, you know, eight different cuts. So the fighting style of the Katana is very unique in a way that for instance, if I'm boxing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slip a, a punch and I'm gonna throw another punch. It's difficult to slip a katana. So when you're, when you're blocking with a katana, it, let's say I'm blocking someone trying to slice me in the head, I'm up blocking, and as I'm moving the sword, their sword away from me, I'm going to strike. So it's kind of like a, a mixture of attacking and defending at the same time. And what's very unique about this is when you hold a sword, you want to hold it in this hand like this, and you want to hold the bottom with your pinky at the very bottom of the sword like this. And what you want to do is you want to do a push and pull motion. So as you're pushing, you're pulling at the same time. That is what creates the power. And in Japan, uh, if you did something wrong or you disrespected your clan, they'd cut your pinky off. So everybody knows about the, the, you know, the Yakuza losing their pinkies, right? Well, the reason why they were losing their pinkies is because they needed the pinky to hold at the bottom of the sword. And without that, you can't generate as much power. So then they would be essentially defenseless. And in Japan, they would test the katanas with prisoners to see if they could cut through you or not. And if it could cut all the way through you in a slice, then they would get a stamp of approval. To fight multiple people at once, especially when they're surrounding you in a circle with swords, yeah, it's not likely that that's gonna happen, unless you're Uma Thurman. Next up, Paul W.S. Anderson's 1995 Mortal Kombat. Okay, that was awesome. All right, so this move you see quite a lot. I don't know what the move is called, to be honest with you. I think it's like a mix of judo and wrestling, but I don't really know too many people that could do that, but still very impressive. Classic Liu Kang bicycle kick. I mean, come on. I've been doing martial arts a long time. My father is a national champion, and I have never seen a bicycle kick work in real life. The thing is about torque and force. So once you're up in the air, you can maybe only get about two kicks in before you're gonna start, gravity is gonna start, you know, pulling you down. And uh, that's gonna be a problem. How are you gonna generate the torque? So yeah, the bicycle kick, maybe you can do two, pop up, and that's it. So if anybody out there, I don't recommend this, but if anybody out there is flying through the air and doing a kick, like a bicycle kick, and you're going to fall to the floor, you know you're gonna fall. There are ways to break your fall. So there's a lot of different styles um, of martial arts. Kempo is one of them, where they teach you specifically about how to fall, how to break your fall, and how to land on the floor properly using your arms to slap the ground, to absorb some of the momentum, or landing on a certain part of your back where it's not going to, you know, break your back. So, yes, there are ways to fall. 
And that's a very good thing to learn. This movie means a lot to me personally, not just because, you know, I'm, I'm in the new Mortal Kombat, but it just represented an Asian American, you know, in a leading role that was very unique at the time. I don't think that there was many of those that I could really look up to as a kid. Obviously we have Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan and, you know, but even, even Bruce Lee had to go to Hong Kong just to get noticed before he came back to America. Those things are discouraging when you're young to not be able to look and see yourself on screen. And it was one of those things where I always wanted to make a change and make a difference. Now I get an opportunity to do that. So I'm very proud of that. And this movie was one of those big inspirations for me. Next up, Yip Man 3. Okay, I gotta stop it right there. I just wanna say, I just got to work and fight with this guy named Simon Cook, who is fighting Donnie Yen in this elevator. And that dude is a beast. So. Let me just start there. So Simon is from Thailand and I was just filming there with him, like I said, and he's a great Muay Thai fighter. So you can see a lot of the Muay Thai techniques that he's using with the elbows and the knees and close range, that is your best weapon. Elbows and knees at close range are the most devastating thing that you can use. So this is all very realistic. Whereas Donnie Yen is using Wing Chun. And Wing Chun is known for the intercepting fist, the chain hand, the chain punches. It's very rapid fire, it's very linear, and it's very direct. So what's cool about Yip Man and the film Yip Man is Yip Man is the t uh, one of the teachers of Bruce Lee. And what Yip Man would do is Yip Man would hold these sparring matches. I wouldn't call them sparring matches, they were just fighting. Uh, on top of the rooftops in Hong Kong. So he would teach his techniques to the students and in order to learn these techniques properly, he would, you would actually fight another person. And as the legend goes, you know, there would be different dojos that would come and they would challenge them and they would have these real fights. Not to the death, but if somebody gets knocked out, then that's that. But yeah, Yip Man is one of the grand masters who taught the great Bruce Lee. Next up, Batman. Stop right there. Okay, many things to say about this. I'm very giddy to talk about Batman because Batman is a very unique film for me. This is where my father got his big break. My father, who is a martial artist and a stuntman and a fight choreographer, he taught me the love of this game. This is one of his first films. <laughs> So there's a move where Batman punches with the back of his, his fist, right? I think that Batman has some sort of gauntlets um, on his hands, on, on his wrists. At least that's what it looks like and sounds like when the swords were clashing and he was blocking. It, that's a real move. So he's defending and then he's offending. So it looks pretty cool. So there's, there's moments in this fight where they're throwing a punch and he's kind of like stopping and blocking it with his hand. That's not really a, a realistic technique, I would say, that gets used very often. I think that's more along the lines of trying to create something creative in the choreography. But it's Batman. I mean, who am I? I can't critique Batman. What, what am I even saying? Just delete that, delete it. Next up, we have Marvel's Daredevil. I'm gonna stop it right there. This scene is phenomenal. It's very difficult to do what these guys are doing, which is creating a long piece of fight choreography that's almost like a play. In order to get this done, you have to memorize every move and everybody has to be perfectly on point every single time. That's classic Muay Thai sweep. Classic Muay Thai. Catch the leg, kick the other leg, very embarrassing, it hurts, it's not fun. So in this fight scene, they use quite a bit of different things. I saw some judo throws, I saw some jujitsu chokes, 
that turned, you know, he got slammed against the wall while he was trying to guillotine somebody. We have some Muay Thai techniques. We have a Muay Thai trip. We have a front flip onto someone's back. That's, I don't even know what that is. That's just, that's just crazy badass. There's many different styles involved in this fight. And I think that's what makes it kind of unique. But also there was just kind of like that brawling energy where just people are just throwing right hands and he's tired and he's, he gets blocks and just another right hand and he's tired. I saw him jump off the wall and do a Superman punch. That has been done before in the UFC and in real life, and that would work. So the bad guys get whooped in this scene, and the, the protagonist, Daredevil himself, although he's very tired, takes everybody out. I would recommend for these bad guys in the future to attack him maybe at the same time, try to overwhelm him, try to put him in a position where he can't defend himself from all angles, hit him in the back of the head, Maybe somebody grab his legs while the other person is striking. You gotta use your brain, man. You gotta be smart about this. You're fighting Daredevil here. He's blind! He's blind! Come on, you could do better. Do better. Next up, Lethal Weapon 4. Okay, take it easy. Right. You're not gonna stand for that, are you, honey? This is a situation that could be very realistic and could happen in real life, where someone, especially with women, you know, they get grabbed from behind or they're being held by someone who's stronger than them, like a man who's stronger than them physically and they need to get out of the situation. She kind of uses a little bit of a jujitsu slash judo technique to get away and then she's gone. And I think that that's something that it's very good to learn, not just for women, for everyone. So he took the barrel off of his gun. That's how fast he was. That's insane. Um, I don't think that that's very realistic, but it looked it looked really it looked really good. It looked really believable. So when doing martial arts in real life and fighting in real life, a lot of people don't even know what it feels like to get hit in the face. It's an interesting feeling. It's obviously not a good feeling, but it's interesting in a sense. I'm talking about in the ring. It's interesting in a sense where you feel empowered because you understand that you're not gonna die and you're, it's not the end of the world to get hit. Obviously, it depends how you get hit and where you get hit, but let's say for instance for me, when I was fighting kickboxing matches, one time I was in a match fighting a guy who was older than me and more experienced and he did a spinning back fist and it just connected clean. Clean and I just saw white and I heard a beep and I just covered up into like a ball and tried not to show that I was too injured, but he knew, he, he knew he rocked me. And next thing you know, he was jumping on me and he was trying to end the fight, which he didn't. But it was still very painful and shocking. But what it does teach you is that you can come back from these things and you can overcome these moments and you can come back stronger. That's something that I've used in my life a lot, whether it be just as a man or in my work as an actor or in my work fighting, it's teaching me how to overcome. Next up, Wu Assassins. Familiar face. So when I disarm the guy with the gun, his arm is over my shoulder, I put him in what is called a Kimura lock. It's a shoulder lock where you're trying to rip the person's shoulder out of the socket. The Kimura is used very often in the UFC and a lot of people have lost fights to Kimura. It's a real move, it's from Jiu Jitsu, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic um, uh, type of arm bar. We tried to just put a little spin on it. So we're trying to shoot as well as put someone in, in a Kimura. <laughs> And that is how you take down two people at once, realistically. And this platform that we were fighting on was an old wood, like a wood mill. It is not a fake set, this is a real set. If you got hurt on this set, you had to go straight to the hospital to get a, t a tetanus shot. There was a few of us that got cuts and there's just like old rust. Everything you don't want in a fight scene was here in this location, but it looks fantastic. No. Oh. Okay, so here's a really interesting thing. So now the fight has changed from this long stick that he had to now this small knife. So you see how I'm evading the knife? Do you see how when I tried to block, he cut my hand? Then he, then he cut my face? That's very realistic. 
that's how you want to fight with a knife. Whatever's in the closest limb in front of you, you're gonna take. And I think that was done really well in this scene. The knife fighting, when, he's, when I'm moving around the knife, all that stuff I think is very authentic. Once the knife is in his stomach and I knee it in his stomach, that was just a little flair for fun. And finally, we have the new Mortal Kombat. I'm just gonna stop it right off the bat and say that this sand, if this sand gets in your eyes, it's gonna be a problem. And it got in my eyes a few times. <laughs> and man, my eyes swelled up like Will Smith and Hitch. It's not fun, it's dirty. Okay, so in this scene, I am fighting Max Huang. Max Huang is playing a character named Kung Lao. He's a Shaolin monk who does a lot of wushu. That's the style that he does. Max Huang is part of the Jackie Chan stunt team. One of the most famous stunt teams of all times. You ain't just walking into that team. You have to earn your place there. Everyone on that team is top martial artists, stunt people in the world. That move right there is part of Cole Young's MMA training. It's a wrestling move. It's a single leg takedown. He caught a kick and he dug him down. I put a little spin on it, but that's, that's what that is. So now we have a wushu fighter who threw a kick and he got taken down by a wrestling move. So now Cole thinks that, he, he thinks that he has this in the bag. Let's continue. When you see Kung Lao do that with his hat, you know it's about to go down. The poses that we take in the middle of these fights are very different. My, my pose, my style was just kind of straight up, Muay Thai, boxing, you know, MMA guard style. My hands are like up guarding my chin. This hand is here so I could throw a nice clean jab. And this one is here so I could protect my face as I'm fighting. When it comes to Max's style or Kung Lao is more of a wushu fighter. He's more long and wider range. This is just an attribute to this different techniques and different styles. Sometimes you'll see Muay Thai fighters with a long guard as they call it, which is my hand is stretched out a lot further to keep my opponent. You can jab a little bit quicker, but you're not gonna generate as much power. Obviously boxers wanna keep their hands super close to their face and tight so they can guard their chin and they can generate those massive hooks. So funny story there, <laughs> this hat is, is a pretty heavy hat. I think it's like maybe 12 pounds, 13 pounds. So Max is doing all these tricks with the hat and it's very strenuous on his neck. Now he has this move where I'm throwing kicks, just normal kind of like roundhouse kicks and he's blocking it with the hat. But the hat is really hard, it's like made of wood. I broke my foot before kicking a piece of wood, another long story. So when I was kicking that hat, all I was thinking about was, I gotta make this look as real as possible, but if I break my freaking foot again, I'm gonna be pissed. You don't really wanna kick someone with the toe. That's that's kind of like where I, I went wrong. It was obviously an accident. Toes are weak. You wanna kick someone with your shin, or you wanna kick a little lower than your shin and try to get on the top of your foot. And that's that, the hat wins. That's a, a really cool training sequence. That's MMA, kickboxing and wrestling versus wushu and a magic hat. You know who won. All right, well, that's a wrap. Hope you guys learned something. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for watching with me. Till next time. <laughs>